Hi, I'm Double D, and today I'll be talking about an interesting chess problem called the Eight Queens problem. I've heard about it a while back in a class about graph theory, thought it was really interesting, and I started researching about it. So today I'll be showing you everything that I found out. So, what is the Eight Queens problem? Well, it goes like this. You have a standard 8x8 chessboard, and you have to place eight queens on it, so that no two queens threaten each other. How do you do it? And perhaps more importantly, how many solutions are there? This problem was first published by a German chess composer in the 19th century. It was solved not so long after, and it's been determined that there are 92 solutions. But even after that, many mathematicians have worked on solving this problem and calculating the number of possible solutions. And according to Wikipedia, to this day, there is no formula to calculate the exact number of solutions. However, there are lots of interesting algorithms for solving this problem, and today we'll be exploring some of them. First of all, let's think about this problem logically and try to solve it just by placing the queens on the board one by one. Let's say we place the first queen in the top left square. The placement of the next queen is now limited to a certain amount of squares. For the sake of visualizing the problem, all the squares that the first queen is attacking are marked red, and all the ones she isn't are marked green. So our next move can be on one of the green squares. Let's say we put the next queen here. The board state changes once again, and there are now even less squares we can use. Each time we make a move, there are less green squares. And because the queen is the most powerful chess piece, it attacks a huge area of the board. That means we have to find a way to spread out all the eight queens so they cover as much area as possible, but at the same time they cannot attack each other. As you can see here, I've managed to place seven queens, but there's no green squares left. So this cannot be the solution and I have to try something else. Anyway, I think you get the gist of it. There's also a website called datagenetics.com that lets you play around with this problem. I'll have a link for it in the description if you want to check it out. And this would be a great moment to pause the video and see if you can figure out a solution by yourself, if you want, of course. But yeah, if you follow the same logic I just showed, you can easily find a solution, or you can even find all 92 of them, if you have nothing better to do with your life. For example, here's one of the solutions. If you want, you can pause the video here, check for yourself, and see that there really are 8 queens and none of them are attacking each other. However, although it is fun to look for the solutions by hand, it's much easier to write a program that will do that for you. There's a lot of algorithms for this puzzle, and I'm not going to explain each of them in detail, but I'll give you the general idea. The first one is pure brute force. The idea is to try all possible placements of queens, even if they don't make sense at all. For example, placing two queens on the same square. This can obviously never happen, and that's why this solution is really bad and computationally expensive, as there's a huge number of possible combinations. To put it into perspective, the number of combinations is 64 to the power of 8, which is, well, that much. The second one is a bit smarter. It applies a very simple rule, but it largely reduces the number of combinations. If you look at the solution we found before, you can notice that each row and each column contains only one queen, which makes sense because if there are two queens in a row or column, they would attack each other. But as I said, applying this one simple rule reduces the number of possible combinations to 8 to the power of 8. Another interesting fact is that there's symmetry between certain solutions. So if you find one solution, you can, in most cases, find a couple more just by rotating the board by 90, 180, or 270 degrees. This can potentially save you some time and find certain solutions faster. I mentioned earlier that this puzzle has 92 total solutions, 
Well, it actually has 12 so-called fundamental solutions. The rest are just different rotations of those 12. Anyway, the next algorithm is recursive. In order to talk about this method, it's important to understand another thing. The Eight Queens puzzle can be expanded to a more general version of this problem, the N Queens puzzle. The problem is the same, except that instead of 8, we use N, which can represent any number. So now you have to place N non-attacking queens on a N times N chessboard. A simple example is placing four non-attacking queens on a 4 times 4 board. This would be another great moment to pause the video and see if you can figure it out, as there are only two solutions. Here you can see the number of solutions for different number of queens and board sizes, ranging from 1 to 10. You can see it's pretty chaotic and you can't really notice a pattern, which is probably why there isn't a formula for this. Now back to the recursive algorithm. The approach here is this. In order to solve the n queens puzzle, you first need to solve the n minus 1 queens puzzle and then you need to add one queen to it. So if you wanted to solve the six queens puzzle, you would look for all the solutions of the five queens puzzle and then try to add one queen to all of them. And to find all the solutions to the five queens puzzle, you would go back to the four queens puzzle and so on. However, the problem with this method is that it isn't really consistent. There are certain cases where there's a valid solution but it isn't found by this algorithm because it isn't an upgrade of any of the previous solutions. For example, this solution for the five queens puzzle is totally valid, but it cannot be formed by adding a queen to any of the solutions of the four queens puzzle. This means that, although this algorithm is interesting, it isn't viable. The next algorithm generates permutations of the numbers 1 through 8 and uses the elements of each permutation as indices to place a queen in each row. So for example, if the generated permutation is this, then the queen in the first row will be placed in the first square, the queen in the second row will be placed in the fifth square, the third one will be placed in the eighth square, and so on. Of course, this doesn't consider the fact that certain queens can still diagonally attack each other, which means that needs to be checked as well. However, this is still much better than any previously mentioned algorithms. And the final algorithm I want to mention is the backtracking algorithm. We can go back to the first part of the video, where we logically looked at the problem and started placing queens one by one. At some point, we got to this position, and we ran out of green squares. Well, the backtracking algorithm would take the same steps and when it would run out of green squares, it would go back one step. So now, instead of placing the queen in the same square as before, it would try a different square. And if none of these green squares work, it will go back another step. That's why it's called backtracking. This algorithm basically tries all the possible combinations, but in a smart way. The downside is that it can be expensive, as it's a recursive algorithm and there's lots of combinations, but it guarantees finding all the solutions, which is what we want. Okay, that's all the algorithms I wanted to talk about. Now let's put this to the test and see how it actually works. I found an implementation of the backtracking algorithm online. If you're interested to see the source code, I have a link for it in the description. I modified it a bit, and here's how it works. It's a simple console application written in C Sharp. It takes in the number n, which is the number of queens and also the board size, and it spits out all the solutions for the n queens puzzle. Pretty cool, right? If we look at the number of solutions table from before, we can see that it works correctly for any given number. So if I type in 8, it spits out 92 solutions. If I type in 4, it spits out 2 solutions, and so on. But anyway, that's pretty much it for this video. I hope you found this puzzle interesting. Let me know in the comments if you would like to see content similar to this. That's it for now. 
Thanks for watching and I'll see you next time. Peace.